In Uganda, police plays a key role in governing migration and are involved in many processes that affect forced migrants. As keepers of law and order, the police have the potential to improve the situation of forced migrants. In 2010, a year after the Refugee Law Project had initiated training on refugee issues in key police stations around Kampala, the Inspector General of Police, Major General Kale Kaihura, warmly welcomed the initiative and urged the Refugee Law Project to extend it to the national level by working with the National Police Training School to integrate these issues into the National Police Training Curriculum. The training of police instructors which took place in May 2011 and which this clip documents is an outcome of that invitation. We came to train the officers you have seen due to the recommendation by the IGP and due to the work we have already done with the police. We are happy to be here. Regarding refugees and asylum seekers, the police and immigration officers are usually the first points of contact for many forced migrants coming to Uganda. They at the borders, we are going against the principle of non-reforming. Would you just have receive these forced migrants and hand them over back in the spirit of brotherhood? <laughs> so we didn't know that we were contravening the rule. So you have to bear with us that ignorance is also very dangerous. And it is even more dangerous if you are a police officer. <laughs> The current practice of refugee status determination has the police playing the central role of initial registration and taking the testimonies and background information that form the basis for the decision on whether to grant or deny refugee status to individual applicants. When you talk to them, these are political refugees, so they can't go back. They also undertake security checks. While in Uganda, forced migrants just like other citizens may come into conflict with the law or find themselves as victims of crime within the country. As a key player in keeping law and order and ensuring access to justice, the police must be able to understand the phenomenon of forced migration, including the nature, rights and obligations of forced migrants. Discuss the role of government and police in the protection of IDPs in Uganda. As a friend of mine, he went and sought asylum in Britain and then was given a refugee status, he wished to come back. And now the problem was how to get a passport. I don't know whether there are some restrictions governing that. Uganda is party to the international and regional conventions relating to forced migrants. It has also enacted laws, regulations and policies regarding forced migration that require wide dissemination and implementation. Examples of this include the Refugee Act 2006 and the Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act 2009. Uganda has also ratified the African Union Convention on the Prevention and Assistance of Internally Displaced Persons in Africa and signed the Great Lakes Pact on Peace, Development and Security within the Great Lakes region. Under such situations where they are convinced that there has been substantial change of circumstances, then they can invoke what we call the cessation clause, something that is usually determined by the host country, but in practice it's determined by three parties, usually the host country, the country of origin, and the UNHCR. So usually uh, these three parties come up with what we call a tripartite agreement, and they agree that really we've looked at the circumstances of this particular country, and we believe that there is no need for the refugees from that country. To, uh, to, to, to continue living as refugees. So under such situations where they are convinced that there has been substantial change of circumstances, then they can invoke what we call the cessation clause. The Refugee Law Project, through its Education and Training Department, carried out training for the police instructors at Kabalye Police Training School as requested by the Inspector General of Police. The two weeks training aimed at building capacity of the Uganda Police Force to better manage migration, especially as it relates to forced migrants, including refugees, asylum seekers, IDPs and deportees. Not under any circumstance 
forcefully ask an IDP or a refugee for that matter to go back to their areas of origin. The training comprised of nine modules. These included understanding migration and introduction to forced migration, refugee law and practice, internal displacement, gender and forced migration, the refugee child, contemporary challenges in refugee protection, role and functions of institutions dealing with forced migrants, psychosocial issues in forced migration. Fieldwork and community policing was conducted by participants at Chaka 2 refugee settlement. Facilitators applied various training methods including PowerPoint presentations, documentaries, role plays and testimonies. The illustrations were drawn from our East African experience with foreign examples used for only comparison purposes. Facilitators included practitioners and scholars of refugee law and human rights. The training, first of its kind, was a success and marked a new chapter on the training syllabus of the Uganda Police Force. Thank you.